Hey guys, this is Tiffany at Mother Mascara, and today's the last day of the shindig, y'all. The virtual picnic through YouTube. Um, this was a great collab. It was put on by Tony at Kettle Kitchen, Dale and Nana at Nine Acre Family Farms, and myself, Mother Mascara, and it has been so fun to watch everybody that has been involved in this collab. Everybody brought something that... I'll be honest with you, I wish I was there and ate because everything just looks so good. Some of them were classic recipes, which was amazing. And uh, some of them were new and inventive. So, um, don't forget, October the 1st at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, there's going to be a live giveaway over on Tony's channel at Kettle Kitchen. Um, we will be there. Um, there will be hashtags. However, there will be comment pickers. So, you've got one day to binge watch the shindig and leave a legit comment, guys. Make sure that y'all do that because if you repeat, 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 YouTube takes it off, take it off in the comments. I promise. I promise. Um, so, the first video, Tony and I hit off the first video with a pineapple theme. I did the Hooli Hooli Chicken. And Tony did the uh, coleslaw. So we are ending this with I am doing a dessert. And he is doing a main dish. So, and I am hoping we're still doing the same thing. Because we're both supposed to be doing something with peaches. And I am making a cast iron brown butter peach cobbler. Now, I was going to do this outside on my fire pit, but uh, the wind is not cooperating at the moment. So, it's not a good idea. Plus, you know, we all have ovens. Not many people have fire pits. So, we're just going to do it inside. All right. So, let's get started. Um... First of all, I want to thank everybody that joined in, really. I mean, without you guys being the collaborators, shooting the videos, and without y'all that watch the videos and support all of us, this wouldn't have been able to happen. So, I, I really want to thank y'all. Okay, so let's get started. All right, I am making the brown butter cast iron peach cobbler now. The first thing you want to do is the actual peaches. I do not have fresh peaches. I had frozen peaches. So that's what we're working with today. If you have fresh, you want to use fresh. Um, and I will put all the ingredients in the recipe down in the bottom so that, you know, if you want to make it, you can. And we'll see what this tastes like because I have not made a brown butter uh, peach cobbler. I've had the old fashioned peach cobbler, but. Um, so let's roll with this. Alright guys, I'm going to bring you down and show you what I got because there's a couple of different steps. Okay, here we are. So what I have in here is uh, a pound of peaches. Now the recipe calls for three pounds. I didn't realize that when I was trying to find something to go in a cast iron and I only bought a pound of frozen peaches. So we might have a little more uh, sauce and crumble than we do peaches. But hey, that's okay because the crumble is the best. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is work with your peaches first because they have to sit. So what you're going to do is you're going to add in a third cup of brown sugar, which I have here. Um, three tablespoons of lemon juice, and I have that right here. Two tablespoons of cornstarch, and actually, I am going to stir this up a little bit, and then we're just going to kind of sprinkle in the cornstarch here, get it off the bottom. Um, now, as this, mine are frozen, if yours are fresh, of course, this is all going to marry together because fresh is going to release the juices. Of course, frozen is going to release the juices of the water. Okay, so your um, your seasonings that you're going to need is one tablespoon of cinnamon. 
and a half a teaspoon of salt. And we're just going to sprinkle that in there. And I'm going to be honest with you, that's a lot of cinnamon. But I just realized in my head that that's for three pounds of peaches. So, ooh, this is going to be cinnamon and then and then and then. Cinnamon. -y. So, what you're going to do is mix all that together. And I will pour it here. Okay. So, you're going to mix all this together. And it needs to sit for five to ten minutes, right? That way, everything can marry together. The juices can be released. I cannot talk from fresh peaches. And, of course, my frozen peaches will be thawing at that time as well. They're almost thawed out. So, let me separate this one. Okay. All right. So, what we're going to do is set this off to the side and let it rest, you know, for 10 minutes. So, I'm going to put this right over here, hopefully. Okay, so the second part of this is you're going to need a half a cup of um, nuts. Of course, normally people use pecans. Um... However, I'm using a blend of pecans, pumpkin seeds, and almonds. These need to be toasted. So right here is my cast iron pan, and I'm just going to put these in here. And um, get them toasted. This is the same pan that I'm going to use in, uh, to pour the peaches in. So I figured why not toast them in that. Okay, so I'm just going to let them ride for just a second. And be careful when you're toasting or browning butter to keep your eye on it. Okay, now we're going to make the peach crumble. And I'm a little nervous about these nuts. I'm going to be honest with you because I almost burnt this brown butter. And I did... brown butter off. I did do the brown butter off camera because uh, that's a little tricky. Um, you need two-thirds cup of butter and when you're browning it you I mean you've got to watch it or it is going to uh, it's going to burn. Just tell me. It's going to burn quickly. Um, it took uh, this time it took about Maybe about three or four minutes it took me to get it to a, where, I, where I wasn't scared that it was going to burn. So I just took it off um, and let it finish. So, let me put these in. I do not want those to get too toasted. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to take your brown butter... And put it into a dish, into a bowl. Oops, let me move the camera down some. Sorry, I'm still getting used to adjusting this. And I am going to put these bits in. I'm pretty sure a lot of people don't, but I don't want to waste this. And the bits taste good to me. Okay, so the next thing, let me start this. Toasted nuts don't take very long, especially when they're really chopped up like this. Um, just so you know. So give me just a second here. Now, because this is cast iron, I cut it off and I'm just going to leave it and let it finish because uh, that cast iron holds the heat. Okay. So. And the brown butter topping, you're gonna you're going to brown your butter. <laughs> you're gonna brown your butter, um, and it's two thirds cup of butter. Okay, 
Next, you will add in a half a cup of uh, brown sugar. Now, I use dark brown sugar. I am not a fan of light brown, so uh, I don't know why. I just like the dark brown. Uh, next, you are going to add in one teaspoon of cinnamon and a quarter of a teaspoon of salt in here. And just put that in like that. Um, you will need two-thirds cup of flour. That is just going to mix in there like so. And you want this to be crumbly, y'all. Okay. And last but not least, let me grab this. We are going to put in... What did I say? Your nuts. Your toasted nuts. And this... You want to mix everything together, and you may have to get your hands in here because you want it to be crumbly. And I've looked up a couple of recipes, and a lot of the recipes use uh, oats in there. Uh, but this is what this one says. Um, That is uh, together. It says on here that once you, I don't know, that don't look right, but we'll see. I mean, hey, it says that it's going to work. Okay, so once you get done mixing everything together, you want to put it on a lined parchment pan, okay? So, okay, here's my pan, and I am just going to put it on the pan. I guess you don't need your fingers to kind of crumble it up, and I'm just going to spread it out like so. I'm about to try this. That's good. That is going to be good on top. Mm. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to set it off to the side and let it cool off. And I've got about five more minutes on my peaches and I'll bring you back. I'm going to preheat the oven. The oven needs to be preheated at 350 depending on your oven because I know mine is a little different. Um, I have to go lower with stuff because it'll slap burn it up. So we're going to put this off to the side, let it get cool and a little bit more crumbly, and then I'll bring you guys back. All right, we'll be back. Okay, guys, I took a little taste of the peaches and cinnamon. <laughs> That's a lot of cinnamon. And uh, so I am going to twist this up a little bit. There needs to be some more peaches in here. And this year, uh, I made uh, rosemary and peach jam, which I found that recipe from Ginger, and it's very good. And I am going to add this in here to try to thicken this up and uh, take on some of that cinnamon flavor. Yes, I know there's rosemary in there, but it's not that overwhelming. So... And rosemary pairs very well with peaches, to be honest. So, I just put that jar in, in the pot. And I'm just going to get this off of here. Oops. Because I don't want to lose any of it. And I am going to mix my jam into this. Because I think I may have a little too much crumble. And it's not going to hurt it. Um, I just think it's going to make it thicker, which I need. Alright, that looks a lot better, and I'm about to try it. Even though my peaches are not, they still have a few more minutes. But, I think... 
think whenever you're working with food, you need to try it in the midst because sometimes you can get to the end and you're like, whoa, what happened? Um, it may need a little bit of something and it's okay to add it. Um, all right, let me get a spoon and try this. Oops, not that much. That's a lot better because I'm going to tell you I had too much lemon juice in there. I really needed two more pounds of peaches. So, whew, I can definitely taste the cinnamon in there, but it is not as strong as it was before. All right, so I'll be right back. I got to light up my oven and get it preheated. And when I do, we'll put it all together and put it in the oven, okay? All right, we'll be back. We'll be right back. Okay, guys, this crumble has cooled down, and I went back and double-checked the recipe. It is on Super Hero. Um, not Super. Bleh, Sugar Hero off of uh, Pinterest because I have not made a cast iron peach cobbler. Um, so, uh, and it did, it, it's, that's the way the crumble is supposed to look, so we'll find out. We'll find out. Alright, so what you're going to do with your cast iron pan is you want to, um, if it is not well seasoned, which mine is very well seasoned, but I still put just a little bit because you're messing with sugar um, in cast iron or you want to put a little oil in there. Not a lot. I mean, just a little. Wipe it with a pepper towel with it, okay? Um... So, this is what we're going to do. So, basically, your peaches go in the bottom. Just like this. This tastes so much better with a jam in it. Now, my oven is set at 350, heating up. And I have to be careful with my oven, so I may have to turn it down. But regularly, it would be 350 for 35 to 40 minutes. Okay. Ooh, my sucker's still hot. So I'm just going to kind of spread my peaches out a little bit since I'm missing a few. But it's all good. Just like that. Let me move a few of these over. Hopefully, we'll get a bite in every, I mean, a peach in every bite. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> okay. So, then it just says to take the crumble. And, uh, it's so, this crumble is so different. So, I am just going to grab it and, actually, I'm going to put this tray Pick up the parchment paper and we're gonna roll from there and see what happens. Because it is definitely on the parchment paper. Let's not lose any of that. Technical foul here. Maybe that's not a good idea, guys. Let's put it up here. Because it is getting everywhere but in the peach cobbler. Luckily my counters are clean. Yeah, you want to pick this up and sprinkle it around because of all the butter it is still it's not going to dry out so if you're making this crumble this crumble is not a dry crumble like the normal ones are so i'm just going to fill in all my gaps here this crumble is actually very good especially with the uh the nuts i chose the pepitas are awesome. Yeah. I wanted to do this so bad out on the fire. But maybe next time. I, I mean, 
getting excited. I got a fire started a fire pit and uh, testing my um, actually not really testing but teaching myself stuff new out here. So all that will be coming soon I hope. Okay so yep I'm a little messy here. Let me get a paper towel because can't reach my sink water. Y'all are y'all are blocking my sink water because y'all are propped up halfway in the sink, and halfway on the counter. Okay, so we're gonna put this in the oven, and like I said, pay attention. You know, I'm gonna have to because sometimes I have to cut my oven down because it's gas and I'm new to the gas. So we're gonna put it in the oven at 350. And I'm going to watch it. It says 35 to 40 minutes. And I'll let you guys know whenever it gets done. And we'll give it a taste test. I don't have any ice cream to put on it. But we're still going to give it a taste test. Alright guys, we'll be back. Okay guys, we're back. And I have something on my shirt. I had to run down and take care of the animals real quick. And uh, spent a few minutes <laughs> with Ginger. And... Uh, Anyways, I pulled this out of the oven and it has cooled off to where I can pick up the handle at least, the handles. So this is what it looks like. It's not your typical, you know, peach cobbler. It's a brown butter, cast iron peach cobbler. So, let's try and see what happens. All right, <clears throat> kind of sort of reminds me of, uh, oh boy, it reminds me <clears throat> of sweet potato souffle, but it's not, oh my gosh, it's very thick, and I like it like that, okay. So, let's see what this is going to taste like. Okay, so here it is in the jar. You can see some of the nuts, the peaches. I know there's a weird shadow, but there's no light in a camper for anyone who stays in a camper or no. Okay, so, cheers. It is um, very thick. <laughs> I feel like my mouth is stuck together. It definitely needs ice cream. I don't have any drink. <clears throat> It is very thick, very rich. Um, I feel like I have peach cobbler lipstick on now. Anyways, very good. I would suggest to cut this with something on top. Um, maybe not ice cream because that may make it overwhelmingly sweet. Oh, that was where my speaker disconnected. Whoops. Um, uh, maybe, maybe it's just some for real cool whip. Not cool whip. I mean, like, whip up some heavy whipping cream and uh, put it on top. Man, it is like smack your lips really, really good. Very, very thick. Uh, mm. When you make the recipe, I would definitely go with three pounds of peaches, though. Um, and you cannot taste the rosemary from the jam that I put in there. I had to just think fast on my feet, y'all, and figure out how to fix this. Because um, it's not like the stores right down the street here. All right. So, cast iron. I can't even really talk. My mouth's so sticky. Cast iron brown butter peach cobbler. It's a hit. 
is very good. It'll make you smack for quite a few minutes. Sorry. Um, anyways, I want to say thank you again to everybody in the collab. Everybody watching, y'all. We, we really appreciate y'all a lot. I'm talking to both sets. We appreciate y'all so much. Um, do not forget about the live on October the 1st. Remember, it is at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time over at Kettle Kitchen's channel. Um, thank you, Dell and Tony, both, for hosting the collab. Uh, this was so fun. We'll have to do it again next year. Uh, and I think that's about it, guys. I love y'all. I will see y'all on my next video. Bye.